Hello, everybody. I'm back and so happy to see you. And Mark and I were away last weekend to Williamsburg. It was so nice. We had such a good time. We went to Barrett's Seafood Restaurant, had a wonderful waiter named Christian. It was just a wonderful time. We stayed at a wonderful Comfort Inn down there. And we went to the Merchant Square and had lunch and people watched. And it was just great. It was just wonderful. So it was important to get away. Let me see who is here tonight. And I'm so glad to see you. I have so much stuff to show you. It's all just piled here. I have been working on dolls, dolls, dolls since the moment I got back Sunday night. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. And I've got a new book for my grandsons that I'll read to them later tonight. I'm excited. Cheryl! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, well, let me come back and see all who's here. Miss Marsha, our hostess with the mostess, and Debbie, hello, and Barbara Smith, good to see you. And whoops, I keep, I love y'all chatting. That's wonderful. It keeps bouncing back and forth. Oh, look at, whoops. Oh, no. You don't feel sick, but you're tired of being in the house. Yes. Oh, good luck with that, sweetheart. Cheryl sent me the nicest package and uh, got some things for Miss Jody in it and some things. So I'll show you that Sunday. Okay. Ah, oh, but it's so good. Thank you, Miss Cheryl. I hope you got my email. It was so exciting. Mark brought me up this big box. What's this? And I love stuff in the mail, so it's always a thrill. Okay, Kathy Klein is here. Yay, Polly. Hi, Polly. We're going to get together at some point. Okay, I promise. Linda McCollum. Oh, it is so good to see you. So it was so nice for Mark and I to just get away and have some time together. And uh, maybe if I have a second, I'll show you some of the pictures. Oh, let me, I'll show you Sunday. But we saw some amazing cotton fields. And so I said, Mark, we've got to stop. And let me take a picture and see if there's any broken cotton plants. Because my mother's side of the family were farmers. I'm not going to steal some farmer's stuff. But there were some broken ones laying on the ground, which don't do any good because the mechanical harvester can't really pick them up. So I brought some of those to show you. And we saw this cotton field. And I said, oh, pull it. He pulled over. And I said, oh, pull up there, because I saw a little dry place. But then I noticed this pile of dark stuff near the highway. I said, oh, look, there's manure. Not thinking, there's manure. <laughs> so we get out of the car, and I go over to stand in the cotton field. And I mean, this manure is something awful. It made your eyes water. You could hardly breathe. So we were like, quick, take a picture. I can't take this much. And then I said, please don't pull forward because I don't want to get it on the tires. You know, make sure it's not on our shoes. We smelled that manure for two days. You know how a certain smell gets in your nostrils and it's like, the next day you're going, oh, I still smell that. I don't know what kind of manure it was, but it was rank. <laughs> it was rank. So, oh, Edwinese, how are you, hon? So I'm so excited. We had just a good time. We really had a good time. I've been exercising on my elliptical trainer, and I pulled my back for a went. And I didn't tell Mark exactly how bad it was hurting for it went. So it kind of, we were just careful. And, uh, but it was, um, it, 
it was so much fun to get away. And um, we had a wonderful first night meal, then lunch out on the um, Merchant Square. We went past all these wonderful old houses. I don't know which ones are reproductions versus which ones are original. I know that the Rockefeller family saved Williamsburg back in 1937. It's something I grew up with, Yorktown, all of that. I get so excited when I see the architecture and the colors. That's my stuff. And so it was wonderful. Mark is just great. His finger has just about healed because, you know, he cut himself the week before we left. But um, he had a great time, too. Oh, we rode a ferry, the Jamestown Surrey Ferry. We rode the ferry over to Jamestown and then beyond to Williamsburg, and we rode it back home. That was so much fun. Okay, so we get ready to come back, and we are the next to the last car to get on the ferry, and they pack you in so tightly. Well... I was going to get out and I was going to go up on the second level and take pictures and look. They pulled us in beside a big pickup truck on one side and two motorcycles, tri-wheel tri motorcycles on the other side. I couldn't open my door to get out. They wedged us in so tightly. So I was sitting there and I'm thinking, mm-mm. I'm getting out. I love these ferry rides. I haven't been on a ferry ride for 40 years, and I'm getting out there, and I'm going to have my fun. So Mark gets out, and I look over at his driver's seat. Now, we've got a whole console in between, right? It's a Honda Odyssey van with the bucket seats and the big console full of junk in the middle, okay? I Pop my left leg over there, and all 66 years of me got out the driver's side. <laughs> I don't know how I did it to this day. I don't know how I did it, but I got out of that car, and I climbed over the motorcycle tires, and I went to the front of the ferry and had a blast. And so we've got some, I've got tons of pictures to show you. I took a movie that I promised I'm going to get edited. And hopefully I've got the editing program working right. But, oh, man, what fun. Mitty is here. Hi, Mitty. So, anyway, we got home, I guess, about 5 o'clock Sunday. And, uh, oh, we slept so good. Being back in your own bed, you know, it's, it's getting harder and harder to travel the older we get. There's nothing like being home with your own routine, your own foods, your own bathroom, your own bed. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great to get away, and it was so, so nice. So, like I said, I got home Sunday night, and I have been doll crazy. In fact, oops, let me see. I ordered a one-pound block of flesh tone polymer clay from... Amazon. Here it is. And it was only $9.99. And I've already used a good size hunk of this. So I'm having fun. But oh my goodness. All right. A couple little things. You remember I made this big head that looked rather odd? Well, I found out one night when I was sitting up, it was about 2 a.m., I took my blade, my, if you've ever done polymer clay, they have a, a blade, like a long razor blade blade. I found you could carve these. I got so excited. Jody's here. Yay, Jody. Oh, Cheryl. Um, Jody, wait till you see what Cheryl sent for you. I'll be passing it forward very, very soon. So, oh, it's so good to see Jody. Oh, so I found you can carve these puppies. So do you remember this kind of looked like an alien space being? Well, I carved the eyes so they're not so buggy sitting out. 
So I carved the eyes and repainted the face. So now I can use this because it's not quite so freaky. <laughs> Hopefully it won't scare small children. Then I had another one that didn't look so good. So I carved this down and turned it in to a fairy and turned her into this greenish flesh tone fairy. And see her ears? I added to her ears. When you're using polymer clay, you just get a liquid polymer and put it on there. And when you bake it again, it bonds it. So now she's got fairy ears. And then I did a little bit of work on my old man. Getting him ready. Oh, good. She got her own box of stuff as her me. Oh, my gosh, Cheryl. You're so sweet. Oh, my gosh. You are the sweetest. So, then I did a little bit more work on this one. Okay. And I think I'm going to try to use her, even though the head is shaped funny. If I put enough hair, you might not realize that she's a little bit of an odd thing. <laughs> And then I said, okay, I want to make, uh, oh, I left one upstairs. Oh, poo. Oh, no, maybe I put it in this box. Hold on. Oh, no, I might have left her upstairs. Oh, poo, I'm sorry. Put, put hair on the old woman, too. But I'm not sure she made it down here. Oh, ooh. I got something in from Connecting Threads I'll show you on Sunday. But then now that I got this new thing of clay, I said, I'm not happy with how I did those others. So I knew that because my back was pulled, I wanted to take Monday and Tuesday easy. So I started working on some new heads trying very hard to get the carving, I mean, the, um, the clay work better, okay? So here is one that looks much better, much more normal. Here's this one. And then... I said, I'm going to try to make an old woman, a gypsy old woman. So here is, I mean, her eye was shining funny, but I think it's fine. Let me see. I put on the triple thick. Hold on just a second. I want to make sure the eye looks good. Sometimes the triple thick bunches up just a little. Yeah, I'll fix that later. But here is my little gypsy old woman. And I think she's so cute. So she has does she does have a lot of character. In fact, I said, Mark, I'm better at making old people. I guess that's what I'm always looking at in the mirror. So I think I might make a few old people. But anyway, I'm real happy. I think now they look a lot more normal. Oh, I haven't finished painting her. I've got to put lipstick and blush and stuff on her. Then here are the arms I made for the fairy. And this one is in a grasp so it can hold something. And this one just has, you know, some uh, movement. And I put the polymer clay over the armature wire and over some aluminum foil to give it, I you don't want it to be so heavy. So I took the armature, I covered it in crunched up aluminum foil and then covered it with the polymer clay. So here are her arms. And here are her legs, right here. And I said, you know what? In all of these pictures I was looking at, they make the, the dolls impossibly thin. So 
I said, no, I'm not going to make her impossibly thin. She's got to look like, like, so this, this is how I've got it planned. This is going to be like, she's just stepped off. And this one will be like that. So here are her two legs. And then she's going to have that. Whoops. I don't know what I did with the body now, but I've got a body for her. This is going to, here it is. Here is her body, and so I've got to get all of these things lined up, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do for her costume. All right, then while I was busy today painting everything, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn the camera down so I can show you this, but I took and painted the feet and hands of this little doll, and it's probably going to be him, or it might be my grandma doll upstairs. I'm sorry I didn't bring her down. I think I stuck her off to the side. I'll check a container in a moment. Okay. Let me bring the camera down, and that way I can show you what I have been working on. Okay, let me see if I can tighten this a little touch more. Now, I think we do have to work. This one joint, I might have worn it out. But let me see. <laughs> okay. So I did, I painted some legs. I went ahead, it was easy, oops. It was easier. Hold on. Whoops, no, don't go in there. Okay. It was easier to just take the acrylic paint I mixed and paint the just the hands and legs and another hand. Then, let me see. I'm trying. I, I'm pretty sure I made. Here's my new hands for my little gypsy old woman. Here are her hands. She's going to be holding something. Um. Let's see, what new hands? Oh, are these new hands? I think these are some new hands. I got a bunch of hands. And the, this one was the one had a finger broken off. I glued it back on. So this is my little old man's hand. So anyway, I think I've got a lot of bits and pieces here. And I need to assemble these dolls. Now, all right. So I've shown you that. Oops. Okay. Then I'm still, I've still got to work on trying to turn this painted face into a doll. But I cut out two more heads and I put little ears into them. So I'll get ready. Maybe before we go, I'll show you how I'm going to try to sew that. All right. So. That's seven doll heads, but my little old lady, I use the, the wonderful gray yarn. It's great. So, but I don't think I brought her. If I go through all this and she's not here, remind me and I'll go and look at a basket I brought over there. All right, let's come over here and see what all this mess, whoops, this old oh boy. Uh, let's see what I have got. I'll bring it down like this. All right. So, this, this, where is my fairy doll? Come here, fairy doll. Where is my green headed? There she is. Right, right there. So, I'm going to do her in a mix. She's got green eyes and blue eyeshadow. So I'm going to do a mixture of like this teal ribbon and I might try to find a way to use this. You could almost, you know, use that as like an outfit. The old man, yes, I've got to make him a can, a cane. Good idea. Wait till you see. Look what I've got. I went just looking for stuff because I have collected pure junk over the years. Look at these two wonderful brooms. So my old woman 
Where are my old woman hands? Here's one of them. And I, I knew I was going to put something in her hand. She can hold on to the broom. See? So I'm very excited. So I, I went looking. And here is the compilation of all that I found. I found some beautiful gold ribbon. I found some leaves for my my garden fairy girl here. For the old woman. I found a rolling pin. I found some cute little fake apples. So my little old woman could be selling apples to make apple pies or something. I don't know. But I've got some leaves to sew on the costume for my little fairy girl. Here are some beautiful rustic yarns that I can use for my little old man, my gypsy man, and my gypsy woman. I found laces because one of the dolls, I'm going to make a beautiful, a beautiful costume. So I went and found some of this stuff. I've got it in so many different colors. Um, I've got it here even in pink. It's like, what can I find? You're at a retreat center. Oh, neat. Neat. That is fantastic. Tell everybody we said hello. So I've got, I'm just trying to show you this. I went around tonight. I found some cute little trim here. All right. And, and look at this. Wouldn't, I mean, I just love these little things. It's just fascinating. Little bits of stuff I didn't throw away. Now, here is some, um, here is some Angelina fiber. And I'm going to pull this aside because I want to show you, talk about that in a moment. But here is some metallic Christmas metal, you know, kind of a metallic lace. That can be used in a costume. This is going to be part of my fairy costume. Here is some neat ribbon that I have for one of them. All of this, whoops, not that. All of this is going to be part that I use for my fairy costume. And this is probably, I'm going to have a little basket for my little gypsy woman to sell her apples. And I've got these little flowers I'll put in there. All right, so I'm going to save this with the Angelina fibers. Then my fairy, I think she's going to have little bells on her feet, on her shoes or whatever, maybe her little outfit, but found those. Then look at this cute thing. I just said, what can I find that I can use with some of these characters? This is going to be used with the fairy. <laughs> Those are cute. They're not quite as nice as Betty Grable, but. Uh, <laughs> and then here are some more leaves I can put on the fairy's costume. And you remember I showed you this last week. It's one. I don't know where the other earring went, but that'll be cool. Um, I got some liquid nails in case I need some glue to hold some things. Then. Here are just some little tiny beads that are sweet, just to remind you to look through your beads. And then I have a ton of tiny little beads here that I can use. Now, then I found a little hat that I could use. Maybe old woman will have this hanging off of her head, or maybe on top of her head. I'll see. Then I was telling you about hair. Here is some wool that my daughter gave me that I can use to make hair. Then, oh, I've got so much here, is doll's hair that somebody gave me years ago. And so, like, you've got the Shirley Temple ringlets. Then some of this has not been 
cared for really well because I didn't think I was really ever going to use it. So, you know, surprise. But anyway, I still have it. And I know I will use it on some of these dolls. And then I'll need to find what kind of glue uh, holds this on. So I'll figure that out. So I've got wool, hair. I've got this hair. And now let me... So far as clothes for the little old woman and the little old man, I said, what is better than wool scraps? And I've got all kinds of patterns and designs of this. And then I've got a whole box of it over here. All different kinds. Look at this here. So I've got lots of scraps of wool, and that will be perfect, wool or cotton flannel. That will be perfect for my little old man and my little old woman. So now let me move this out of the way. As you can see, I want to make sure that the old woman's not in here. No, I don't see her. But... All right, and this is what I use. When you try to stick old polymer clay to new polymer clay, just get a liquid Sculpey. Acts like a glue when you rebake it. All right. Now, here's some more of the muslin for the bodies. I really like working with muslin. It's not very stiff. Really nice to work with. Okay. Let me get that out of the way. Now... Here we've got some more for my fairy doll. I think that is really beautiful. And I kind of want to keep her a little bit natural and a little bit magical. Look at this. This is just the perfect fabric to just, it, it's not the tool. It's something a little different. It's like a fine organza. And, you know, I can cut this into little rough little edges, you know, to make her dress look a little pulled and tugged at and worn. And then look at these. I can hang a few of these on her outfit. Then I have some of this. And I even have some of this if I want to try to cut little bits here. 16 quilters. Oh, that's wonderful. Tell them that we wish them a very, very good time. I have a retreat in sometime in November, and I'm looking so forward to it. All right, so I looked in the closet, and I found some satins and some silks. And, oh, that's right. I even have some of that... Um, do peony left, but look at this. That would make something beautiful. Then I have this fabric. That would be perfect for one of the doll dresses. So I just kind of looked and said, what do I have in my scrap bin? Some white satin. So I just went through and looked for everything that's in my closet, and whew, it's a lot of stuff here. All right. Then don't forget that if you have your, um, keep your DNC flosses handy because you could use those to decorate or so. Look at these cute little things. I could take and cut it down the middle and make a, a fancy necklace for something. Um, let me see. Let me get rid, rid of this. Let me see. Hold on. Remove. Um, 
I'm sorry, but we don't allow any spammers in our group, so let me get rid of them. Hide user on this channel. Oh, my goodness. Good, 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 good. All right. <laughs> yep, we took care of it. I figured out how to do it. <laughs> All righty. Now, so then when I was looking through everything, I found beautiful black sequins. And then I found some scrap black velvet. And look at this black, fine black tool. So I think my fancy lady is going to have this in her dress. Now, I have scraps upstairs of LeMay's. Uh, let me see. I just went around. You know, it's so funny. People just say, anybody, you know, want some of this? Some nice, shiny crystal um, tool. Then I said, found this, and I said, this could be a cute doll's hair, or you could even make it into a dress. Just do layers upon layers of this, but it could be hair or dress. But every time I go to a retreat or somewhere, and I look at the giveaway table, because you never know what. I'm going to show you something about this in just a minute. Here are some chartreuse feathers. I can use this on my fairy's outfit. I found some pink feathers that Bonnie gave me a long time ago. On some of these dolls, they have what looks like fishnet stockings. Okay, sweetie, we'll see you Sunday. Aw, Thank you, Linda. It's so good seeing you, sweetheart. Take good care of yourself. These could be used in lieu of stockings on a doll's leg. Because I've been looking at what everything they do nowadays. But look at these little bits and pieces. Oh, and this one, it's like miniature little beads. So when I make the gown with black velvet and stuff, I'm going to put this on that. All right. Now, and I just have all kinds of, like, this is so pretty. Um, just all kinds of organzas. Then I have, this is like a moleskin fabric, but it kind of looks like a velvet. And I even have this, I have a um, satin in this same blue. So that would be a wonderful dress. Little bits of lace, little jewels you can glue on. I love the little fancy pieces of lace. So, okay. Oh, and even some of this. This would be fun to put on that black dress, too. All right. Now, this one's a little big, but I wanted to show you that sometimes, you know, that... That could be used as stockings on one of these dresses. Oh, hi, Miss Mary. Oh, you it's good that you were there with a friend. You don't worry. That's important. Good job. All right, so let me put these back in the basket for now so I can show you. And I even looked at this. This ribbon could be made into an outfit, into a gown. You know, between the two of these, that's really lovely. So, just look at everything with a different eye. Because you never know what you can find to do with it. All right. I'll be, let me get, let me move a little bit of this. This is, everything is in the way. Okay. Let me grab one thing real quick. All right. Aha! I did find my little gypsy doll head. And let me... Before I showed her to y'all, I was going to try to do something to brush her hair a touch more, but I don't know. Whoops! 
<laughs> but anyway, here is my little gypsy woman doll head. And maybe if I put a little hat on her. And um, so anyway, but I've got her now ready. And she'll be my apple seller and all of that. All right. So now what I'm looking at. Oh, be careful. I found a threaded big needle in that bag. That's not good. That is how I probably, I think I took a class with some of these threads. And I just stuck the needle in the bag. But see all of these little shiny bits and trims? So there, they're lovely. All right. So here is the stuff I'm thinking about for for my my little fairy girl and um so i want it to be real pretty i want her to be very very pretty so i want her whoops let me bring this down again i want her to have wings oh that's a wonderful Yes, I do hope your friend will be better very soon. So, and you know that I paint the eyes and then I put the triple thick on them to make them look glossy. I was thinking it would be really nice to have this fabric as the wings, the Angelina, and take some of the blues and put on the Angelina. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can do this. If I can find my ironing sheet, here it is. I will show you how to, to take and make Angelina wings. All right. Let me put some of this. But I think you see I have lots of good stuff for this fairy doll. I found a lot of the beautiful blue green that I can use for her. Okay. And a lot of stuff for my little apple seller gypsy woman doll. Okay. Now let me grab this iron, turn it on. I think I'm just going to turn it on five because I don't need it to go. So now I'm thinking, do you see I have here this fine silver, um, fine silver. Oh, thank you. I was telling them, Miss Mary, that I went back with my doll heads. Both of these I carved to make them look better. And then decided to turn this one into a fairy doll. But the thing I'm most excited about is I got some new clay in. And I, I made a little old woman doll. And I made a better face. So I'm trying to learn to get better at this. So, anyway. But I'm thinking this fine metal wire would be really good to use around the wing shapes. So here we go. Let me put my ironing sheet down. When you work with Ange Angelina, you it will not stick to anything but itself. It's like a polyester style um, fiber. And when it's heated, it melts against itself. Now, here is some that I made already and when I was in a class. And so this is, it's like a holographic color. I don't think it's this color. Maybe it is. But what I'm thinking, well, let me use a little bit of both. What I'm going to show you is what I was thinking of how can I make wings. So I thought, what if I took Angelina? Now, what makes the Angelina fiber stronger is if you have the fibers going 
in different directions. You can lay it down one way and then come back and put it crossways or just mix it all up when you lay it down, okay? Then when you've got it where you want it, okay, got it there, you take and fold this Teflon sheet, any kind of heat proof sheet, your stick proof. My iron is warm and I'm gonna take and iron the new fabrics on the old fabric. And I can smell it, so I think it's working. All right. Let me move these over a little bit more. All right. So now you very carefully pull it loose. And now, see, you have a nice, thicker sheet of Angelina fibers. Now, I'm going to want this. Since my doll is going to have a lot of blue and green in her, and I need to, upstairs somewhere, I have some green Angelina. But I'm going to take some of this blue Angelina and lay it in across this to give a little extra color. And it doesn't take much. Angelina fibers usually last you a pretty good time, long time. It doesn't take much. But this way... I can make some wonderful dragonfly style wings, like triple on each side of my fairy girl. So I'm going to pull, make sure I have enough of these blue. And then later on, when I find my green ones, I'll add those too. And this way, it'll go really well with her outfit. Okay. So now, I think that's pretty good. Make sure that the fibers are, make sure that they're on the piece where, exactly where you want them to be once they're ironed. If they're hanging off the edge, it's not going to do a lot of good. All right, I'm picking up all the little bits. That stuff is so fine. So picking it all up, making sure it's on the sheet, good. All right, then I just fold this over to protect it. And then, because if you didn't have this sheet, it would stick to your iron. What a mess it would be. And don't iron it too long. It can burn. So you just want it to melt, not to scorch. Okay. Carefully pull this off, and there we go. Now we have, and you could use it this way or this way. And what I'm thinking is drawing out three separate wings for each side and then seeing if I can make a little outline and sew this wire onto sew the wire onto the Angelina. I don't know if it'll work, but it doesn't hurt to try. This would give, and I have some wire that's a little thicker than this too, I could also use, but it would be nice to have wired wings so that you can put them in just the right shape. So that's how you make Angelina fiber, and I think it'll make beautiful wings. Okay. All right, and I may even want to do another bit of white over the top, trap the blues on the inside, might even, well, why don't I go ahead and try that real quick, because the blue, it's so different than the white, it's a little harsh, so let me come in here. Kind of mix it all up good. I love dealing with this stuff. And I hardly ever use it. So it's nice to have a chance to use it. Making sure all the fibers are on here. I think this will be actually prettier to have it trapped in between the lighter color. All right. Looks good. Looks good. Close this over. Whoops. All right. Stay back. 
But I was thinking, how am I going to make the wings? And then I went, aha, Angelina fibers. All right. So give this a good press here. All right. Then open it up. Peel it gently off. All right, let me put this back away. I'm trying to keep my room clean, but I tell you what, it's hard if I don't put stuff back right away. I think I like this side best. But isn't that, I love the iridescence, and it kind of gives the look of a wing. So that's going to be the material for the wings. All right. Now, one thing I wanted to take some time to show you is what I found in the drawer when I was looking. I told you about, let me get this up just a little. I told you about the fake hair I had and the real wool, and I've even got some other. Well, this is all colored crinkly wool that my daughter gave me. Scraps of wool. And look at some of this. This is going to, look at this. So guess what? This is going to be her hair. And she even gave me all kinds of different wools like this. These are all the scraps she had left. So that's why I was telling you, if any of you are really making your dolls, you're really fo focused on doing it, I will share some of my wool with you. But I was going to, I have to find what exactly, where, where did my little, here she is. All right. So what I'm going to do is use a combination of things for her hair. I've seen some glorious, glorious pictures. Look at some of this. But I've got to find out what will cause this wool to stick to her scalp. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, I used some Angelina fibers for a project with y'all, but I forgot now what, what it... I, I forgot what it was, but no, when I was a costume maker, I never used Angelina. I only found that since in the last like seven, eight years, but look at all these little bits of dyed wool. This must be like an alpaca. It's absolutely stunning, but I'm going to take and mix the hair, mix it with maybe a leaf, maybe... I, don't, I would have to show you some of, in fact, I will show you that. Oh, sweetie. Now, I'm learning as we go. You saw my first polymer clay little creatures. They, In fact, this was one of them. I had to learn how to carve and carve her eyes out and carve her nose down. She had a huge nose. It didn't look right, so I carved her nose down. <laughs> So, that I used, yeah, I think I did use it for a landscape. It was like a, it was one of these fun landscapes that you do where it's all fantasy. Okay, let me show you a couple things really quickly. I'll show you some of, because I was deciding, okay, what if, what? am I going to do with these dolls I keep making? I've got seven heads here to bring life to. So let me show you. All right. I have now what's listed as doll inspiration. In this, I've got a folder for costumes, a folder for faces. Where I, Look at this face. Oh, my gosh. If I could ever make a face like that. Oh. But anyway, so I've got all different kinds of faces. Whoops, I'm sorry about that. I always forget and close it all the way out. Then I have fairies, and I'll come back to that one. And then, oh, let me turn off my iron before I forget. I've got so much stuff on the table. And then I've got a folder for feet and hands. 
because trying to learn how to do hands was really tricky. And then old faces. And I have wonderful pictures of dolls with old, wonderful faces. So now let me go back here and show you. Let me put, I pulled a couple new fairies out of the group and I want to get them in. Hold on. Oops. All right. So here are the fairies. All right. Now I'm going to show you what I've got. And I just went online and kept typing in, found different ways to type in fairies. Let me see if I can bring this up. Come on. Oh, look at her. Isn't she dramatic? And I consider anything with sticks as arms. <laughs> fairies. Anything unusual shapes. But aren't these cute? There were a couple that just, oh, look at this. Isn't that sweet? Look at that. Now, see how they use the wool in kind of ringlets? Oh, I love it. Okay. Let me keep showing you. Look at that wonderful old face. I don't know how they get the, the long eyebrows. I'm not, I don't think I need eyebrows that long. I put her in the fairies because she's got a bat on her head. So I thought, well, that's unusual. Look at this little mushroom hat fairy. Is that the cutest? But now I'm fascinated with the world of fairies. I am just fascinated. Now, I think some people use polymer clay to make the wings. But, oh, look at this. Isn't that the neatest thing? She looks like roots. So I'm absolutely fascinated with how these people did, did this. And they used fabric stiffener to hold the shape. That way you look at that. Isn't that haunting? I'm drawn to it, but it's a little haunting. <laughs> look at that. Oh, so cute. And there's so many polymer clay accessories you can make with them. So, I know I'm kind of late in the game. Look at all these cute accessories. Isn't that neat? And I got to find little twigs and all that stuff. But these are just, look at him. Now, I could never make a face that good. What is, hold on a second, Mike. Okay, here we go. I could never make a face that good. But boy, is that inspiring. Look at that. I just love them. And I'd love to make some and keep them here as gifts when people come over. But look at that. So cute. Look at this. Isn't that wonderful? Let me see if I can make it larger. Look at that. I love the movement in some of these. Love, love, love it. So when I look at these, there's no way I could make something that beautiful. But I'm going to just do what I can. They're just so cute. I saw this book on one of the sites. I'll have to try to find it. Look at this. A grandma fairy. A grandpa fairy. <laughs> look at those. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, I know what I was going to show you. But I love all the little strips and pieces and ribbony. I love that look. And that's what I want to do for mine, for my fairy. Now, how or where they got those little tiny glasses, I would love to know. Oh, look at this. So this is kind of what has been captivating me this week. And poor Mark, all I've done is work on these dolls because I'm just fascinated with them. And then, oh, and then you can make little fairy houses. So these are just 
Just awesome. Look at that cute little thing. Oh, this, isn't that beautiful? Gosh, I can't imagine making that. Look at that. See how that, the hair is just all different kinds of things. Feathers, horns. Look at that face. So I've got bags of little feathers. I've got lots of little things I think I can use. And then it looks like they took pine, pine needles and made a little nest. There's the cute little clothes. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you can see why I've become fascinated with these things this week. Last week, I was like, this is too hard. I love this fairy dog. And I love how that some of the hair looks like straw and some, you know, is a little bit curly. I just think that is so pretty. Look at this. Uh, this is so cute, I couldn't stand it. I was like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest thing. So, let's see, just a couple more. Look at the pumpkins. I just, look at that hair. I love this stuff. So, so creative. Look at that, a bean, a bean sprout. Look at the roots. Isn't that cute? You can make a whole fairy house. And look, that, isn't that precious? So, and there's so much out there. There are tutorials. There are um, videos. There are patterns. There's so much out there that you can, and this, I love it. It's like a netting, and some I've seen they use like a cheesecloth, and I have some old linens, so I might, oh, I would love to be good enough to make these for my granddaughter who loves Hocus Pocus. But, oh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's just the creativity in this is just unbelievable. So... Just when you think you've seen it all, I told Mark, my biggest problem is I don't have enough hours in the day to do all of this. It's like I love so many different things. But I'm thinking next summer I might want to build a, a fairy house like that. That is so cute. And that's and that just hauntingly beautiful. But there's just all kinds of ways to make outfits. There's all kinds of ways to do hair. It it's a big big world out there. So, and you know what? It some of these kind of reminded me of. Oh, look at that sweet face. And that, doesn't that look so real? Gosh. But some of these reminded me of the hood ornaments back during the Art Deco period. Some of the, the winged ladies who were so elegant. Look at this one. That is amazing. It looks like Elizabethan, an Elizabethan fairy. There we go. But look at this. How easy just to get some sticks, get some little moss, hot glue gun. I mean, it's just so that you could do just about anything. That is a doll. That is not a person. That is a doll. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All right. So I'm hoping I've given you... I guess I really do like bringing ideas to you. Because there's so much in this world. Come on. There's so much out there. So much fascinating. So many fascinating things. So many new things to try. And as long as they're not expensive, it is so much fun. So, 
Um, let me see. I might show you really quickly how. I'm not sure how this is going to work. But I'll try it with you here. And this is the face that I painted last week with you. Because don't worry if you don't feel like you can handle doing polymer clay. Then just get muslin and good old cheap polymer, I mean, acrylic paint and work. Whoops, I'm sorry. Okay, these dolls. Ah, oh, I bet you... I bet you they are wonderful. My camera is getting ready to fall off. Well, I think that means I better let Mark fix this. And I will show you if this works Sunday. But I just realized that <laughs> it's getting ready to fall off. So... Uh, any questions before we go, and then I'll get my camera fixed, and Sunday I can tell you more. But you feel lost like it's... Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to. I'm not a sculptor. And you just try. Just try it. Because I'm going to use her, even though she's missing half a head. <laughs> Maybe I'll sew the other half of the head on. But... Just just give it a shot. Just try it. You just never know. When I did my little bodies like this, I just drew it on muslin and then cut it out and sewed it together and turned it inside out. So you never know what you can do until you try. So that's, that's always the fun part. So you don't have to do them out of polymer clay. A lot of those fairies were polymer clay. But you can just paint a little doll face. There are so many videos that say how to paint a doll face. And last Thursday night, I painted this right in front of you. So you can go back to there and look at it. But you don't have to even do this. But I love showing you new things to try. All right, everybody. I think it's fun, too, just to see what it's all about. But you know what? And Mary, don't sell yourself short. You have done just about everything we've tried on here and done it beautifully. Look how your skills have already grown. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, everybody. And I've just realized, I think when I make the, the wings for this fairy doll, I might add a couple little, little tiny feathers that I've collected over time in with them. It's just fun. Once your mind gets going like that, it's like you can't wait to figure out how can I, you know, get that to work. And I'm going to look through charms and things to decorate the outfits. So I'm hoping I'm going to have a completed doll and outfit for you next week and then some that are in progress. Okay. Well, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you for joining. Y'all are wonderful. And don't give up. Just try it. You know, if it's a little scrap fabric, what have you lost but a few minutes of your time and a little scrap of fabric? So I think you can do it. All right. Have a great couple of days. I'll see you on Sunday. I hope to have that indigo quilt done. Mark was saying to me, when is that indigo quilt going to be done? So I think tomorrow I'll work on that. Give these dolls a rest because that's all I have done. All right, everybody. Any other questions you have before you go? Yeah, isn't it fun? We all have collected so many fun things. And it's like, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Ta oh, Angela and Dell. Yay. It's so good to see you. Wonderful. All right, everybody, take good care. It was so nice to see our Jody back. Um, Cheryl, you're the sweetest thing. And, oh, that Debbie Dingle comment was just made my heart sing. So thank you so much, everybody. Take good care of yourself. Do something tomorrow just for you. Okay? Give it a try. All right. Bye-bye. See you Sunday.